We'll uh, call the meeting to order for Lycomico County Council Legislative Session 2023-07 for April 4th, 2023. Uh, those that like to stand and join us in the Lord's Prayer and Pledge of Allegiance, please do. Okay, stand. Walking. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give and give us this day our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Entertain a motion from council to approve the consent agenda. To move. Second. Motion second. Any corrections, suggestions, any comments? Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. The consent agenda is approved. First item we have on the agenda is a proclamation to recognize the month of April as Child Abuse Awareness Month. We have Jamie Manning, Executive Director of the Life Crisis, and Cheryl Bissell. Bissell? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Uh, CAC Coordinator for Wicomico County Department of Social Services. Joe Holloway is going to make the presentation. Glad to have everybody here. Thank you very much. Thank you for being so, here. So, on behalf of the Child Advocacy Center team and the children in Wacomico County, thanks very much for proclaiming April 2023 as Child Abuse Prevention Month in Wacomico County. This proclamation is more than a piece of paper. It's a reminder to the community and a conversation starter about child abuse and neglect and a call to action how to keep our children safe and protected. It also brings awareness to the Wacomico Child Advocacy Center. It's a best practice approach to respond to child abuse and neglect. The CAC is a multidisciplinary program and a multidisciplinary team. So our partners are the Wacomico County Department of Social Services, the Wacomico County Sheriff's Office, Salisbury Police Department, the Office of the State's Attorney, Life Crisis, a private practice pediatrician, and also support from Title Health. We have social workers, detectives, therapists, medical providers and prosecutors and a victim family advocate. And they're all specially trained in how to respond to reports of child abuse and neglect. So a couple of the members of the team are here as well as some of our supporting partner agencies and I'd like to give them a round of applause. <laughs> this is really heart-wrenching and challenging work that the team does every single day of the year. So it's really important to know that they're appreciated as well. To reduce the incidence of child abuse, prevention activities need to occur ongoing, running concurrent to the inter intervention services that the team provides. That said, outreach and awareness activities are more prominent leading up to and in the month of April. So for example, several weeks ago, members of our team were at the Junior Achievement Inspire event. So we had an opportunity to engage with 4,500 eighth grade students. So not only were we able to talk about the careers associated with the Child Advocacy Center, we were also able to work with the students to help them learn more about um, personal safety and protection. Um, we're having Wear Blue Fridays every Friday in the month of April. It's an easy way to show awareness. So if you participate, take some pictures, post to social media. Again, it's just a conversation starter. And then this morning, there were a team of 23 of us in Salisbury City Park planning 676 pinwheels. And you're like, why 676? Those are the number of cases that the team investigated last year. And already, since the first of this year, we have 484 reports. And we're in early April. It's not a good situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you'll see also pinwheel gardens popping up all over the county. Again, it's another way to show awareness. 
We've left some pinwheels for members of the county council here. Um, in closing, the children of the county need the community support to help them stay safe and protected. Mm -hmm. And how, priority number one, report. If you have concerns, if you have indications of a child being abused or neglected, please make that report. Have those difficult but critical conversations with the children in your lives. Post trainings and share information with your colleagues, your businesses, your congregations, if you're members of civic associations or organizations. Sponsor and support fundraisers. Make donations of snacks or funds. I mean, we want to just make sure that the kids who come to meet with us or they come to court, that they have meals or snacks while they're going through some really hard times. So, and I'm available anytime, anywhere to talk about any of this. Mm -hmm. um, again, we want to be partners with the community. But thank you, County Council, for recognizing Child Abuse Prevention Month. We appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, okay, I, I did, it, it is a paper. <laughs> you know, one of the things that um, makes Wacomico County a great place is um, what folks like this do all the time. So I'd like to um, present this proclamation for National Child Abuse Prevention Month, where it is as estimated nationally there are more than 1,540 children die each year from child ab abuse and neglect. And whereas child abuse is a serious public health problem, with studies documenting the link between abuse and a wide range of medical, emotional, psychological, and behavioral disorders. And whereas child abuse prevention is a community responsibility that requires partnerships among various, various agencies that work with children. Now therefore, be it resolved that the County Executive and the Wacomico County Council proclaim April 2023 as National Child Abuse Prevention Month. This is signed by the county executive and all the county council members. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Circle round. Next proclamation we have is to recognize the month of April as Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Ms. Jamie Manning, Executive Director of Life Crisis. everybody for taking a few moments to recognize Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Um, one in three women and one in six men will experience sexual violence during their lifetime and that is based on reported statistics. Um, so it is a serious problem that we don't talk about quite enough. Um, in each of your packets with your pinwheels there are some little jean um, pins that represent Denim Day, which is an international day um, of recognition for sexual violence. This year, that day will be April 26th. Um, you can show your support by wearing jeans, uh, participating in, in fundraisers, and different things like that. So, thank you. Okay. Thank you for the great work you guys do. Um, all right. So this is a proclamation for Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Whereas Sexual Assault Awareness Month is a time to draw attention <coughs> to the prevalence of sexual assault and educate individuals and communities about how to prevent it. And whereas sexual harassment, abuse, and assault are widespread problems in the United States, nearly one in five women and one in 67 men have been raped at some time in their lives, and one in four girls and one in 20 boys have been sexually abused by the age of 17 and whereas sexual harassment, assault, and abuse can happen anywhere, including online. Cyberbullying and sexual harassment have come to be expected as typical online behavior, and whereas we can make a difference by building safe online spaces 
that are free from sexual harassment, abuse, and assault by promoting online communities that value safety and respect. Now, therefore, the County Executive and the Wacomico County Council hereby proclaim the month of April 2023 as Sexual Assault Awareness Month in Wicomico County, done this fourth day of April 2023, and it's signed by our County Executive and all of the Council members. Thank you. Thank you. And now we get to take pictures. Thank you. Pictures or it didn't happen? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't introduce the rest of the team, but these are some of the lovely ladies from us. I was trying to hide. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Next proclamation we have is for Arbor Day in Wicomico County. Ms. Cassie Dyson, environmental planner, and Josh Hastings is, will be reading the uh, proclamation. I don't know if there's anyone out in the hall. There we go. All right, who loves trees? Oh, Put the hands up. <laughs> yeah, I, I know there's more people who love trees. Me too. I highly recommend. I just finished uh, Doug Calamy's The Nature of Oaks. Great book. Highly recommend reading it. Uh, I'm here with uh, Cassie Dyson, uh, who unfortunately is leaving the county, um, to honor a proclamation uh, uh, for Arbor Day. Whereas in 1872, it was proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees. So a holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of over 1 million trees in Nebraska. Whereas not only can trees reduce erosion and valuable topsoil, lowering heating and cooling costs, uh, uh, moderating the temperature, cleaning the air, producing oxygen, providing habitat for wildlife, it also has a whole lot of other valuable renewable uh, resource and enhance, uh, enhances the beauty of, our, beauty of our community. Whereas Wicomico County is proud to join the nation in recognizing Arbor Day on the first Wednesday of, each, uh, of April, um, each year consistent with the state of Maryland's designation for Arbor Day. Now, therefore, the Wicomico County Council and the county executive urges citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and support efforts to protect woodlands and increase tree cover for the benefit of current and future generations on this fourth day of April uh, um, 2023, signed by the county council. And Cassie, anything you want to say? I think you said it best. Tomorrow we are having a small celebration for Arbor Day out to Atkins Mill Park. Uh, staff from Wacomico County uh, Planning and Zoning as well as Parks and Rec and staff from the Forest Service collaborated with a local 4-H group to plant three trees on site. Um, we hope to continue this throughout the years to celebrate Arbor Day. Uh, so if any council members like to join, you're welcome, but it'll be a pretty small celebration tomorrow night at 530. Thank you. And we're going to give <laughs> one quick picture. Uh, and anybody who loves trees, you're welcome to come up here. And you're not, you know, I know there's plenty of tree fans. Josh, would you rather go outside on the front steps? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. We have three more proclamations. Uh, we have a proclamation, again, to recognize the month of April as Volunteer Appreciation Month. Ms. Jamie Manning is uh, to present it, but I don't know. They're, they should be coming back. And uh, Councilman James Wynn will be presenting the proclamation. This. Several have been in yeah. more than one proclamation. Hi. You got one more? <coughs> yeah, I wasn't We weren't prepared for that one. Well, I'll read this one for you. <laughs> so this is a proclamation for Volunteer Appreciation Month. Whereas April has been designated nationally as Volunteer Appreciation Month to recognize the hard work, dedication, and passion volunteers, and whereas Volunteer Appreciation Month celebrates the impact volunteers have on our, on our lives and encourages active volunteerism in generations to come, and whereas often unpaid volunteers generously donate a part of their lives to connect with community members through local service organizations, and whereas Life Crisis Center, Inc., currently has 71 consistent volunteers who serve by donating their time for the CASA program 
and uh, domestic violence legal advocates. Now, therefore, the Wacomico County Council and the county executive uh, recognize the month of April as Volunteer Appreciation Month in Wacomico County, and we urge all citizens to volunteer in our community. Thank you. Um, if anybody is interested in volunteering, please, you can reach out via our website or um, call through our hotline or our business line. All right, let's get a picture. Yes. <laughs> 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 this is serious. That's the third time that group's been up. Oh, yeah. Well, busy organization. Next proclamation is uh, to recognize the month of April as Fair Housing Month. Uh, Mr. Jesse Drewer, com community planning developer, development planner, I'm sorry. There he is. Jesse sends his regrets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm hanging in here. I'm sorry, Gary. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Gary. Okay. Gary Pusey. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Um, it gives me pleasure to give this proclamation Fair Housing Month simply when I came back home in 81, my first job was advocate for decent migrant housing. So housing has always been one of my top priorities. Um, this proclamation states, whereas the National Fair Housing Act of 1968 prohibits discrimination in the sale, rental, and financing of housing based on race, color, religion, or gender, individuals with disabilities and families with children, and whereas the principle of fair housing is a fundamental human concept and entitlement for all people and recognize the contributions and rich, richness tendered by a wide variety of people from diverse backgrounds, colors, ethnicities, and religious traditions. Now, therefore, the Wicomico County Council and the county executive proclaim April 2023 as Fair Housing Month in an effort to raise awareness of fair housing for all encouraged all citizens to support putting an end to the housing discrimination done this fourth day of april 2023 signed by our county council county executive julia Giordano, county executive and all the council members Any comments, Gary? Thank you. I'll be right back. Uh, Jesse Drewer is unable to be here tonight, so I'm substituting for him. Um, on behalf of the planning department, we'd like to thank the council and the administration for supporting this. Um, access to safe and affordable housing is an increasingly important issue in the county and our department, the planning department. Um, we apply for grant funding in, a, in an attempt to address this and to have the council's support for this proclamation helps us in our applications to try to secure that funding. So again, we thank you for that. Thank you, Gary. The uh, final proclamation we have um, is to recognize April 9th through the 15th as National Public Safety Telecommunications Week. Uh, Mr. John Cooper. There we go. 911 Specialist Chief Communications Supervisor. And uh, the whole team. Come on up. Hey. So it gives me great pleasure to present this proclamation for National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week. Whereas National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week recognizes the dedicated men and women who answer calls for help at 911 centers across the country. And whereas 911 specialists provide the first critical contact for those in need of emergency services. And in the midst of a crisis, 
obtain vital information from callers, <laughs> to rapidly link them to first responders, and sometimes dispense vital life-saving information, information themselves. And whereas the Wacomica County Department of Emergency Services employees, highly trained and dedicated 911 specialists who are on duty 24 hours a day, every day of the year, and often go unrecognized for the work they perform, which enhances the safety of the entire community. Now, therefore, the County Executive and the Wacomica County Council hereby proclaim the week of April 9th through the 15th of 2023 as National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week in Wacomica County and thank all 911 specialists for their dedicated service to the community. Done this fourth day of April 2023. First off, good evening. I want to thank the council and the executive's office for this proclamation for Telecommunicators Week. I'm very grateful to accept this proclamation on behalf of the telecommunicators for Wacomica County. Even though, unfortunately, we're short-staffed, the telecommunicators are working hard each and every shift to make sure the citizens of Wacomica County get the appropriate emergency services discipline in a fast and efficient manner. I also want to thank each of our telecommunicators for their hard work and dedication to the job. We also have with us tonight uh, Shift Supervisor Carrie Center, Training Coordinator Monica Dietz, and C Shift Member John Bourne. Thank, thank, you thank you guys. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks a lot. Good evening, Ms. Hurley. Good evening, Council President, Council Members, ladies and gentlemen. The first item on the agenda this evening is a public hearing on resolution number 49-2023. This is to approve a memorandum of understanding between the Administrative Office of the Courts and the Circuit Court for Wacomico County, Maryland, and Wacomico County, and to amend the fiscal year 2023 through 2027 capital improvement plan, and to amend the fiscal year 2023 capital budget to authorize the funding changes. A public hearing notice was published in the um, Daily Times and on the county's website, stating that a public hearing would be held this evening at 6 p.m. Thank you, Ms. Hurley. This time we open the floor for public hearing on Resolution 49-2023. If you have any comments that you'd like to make in reference to this specific resolution, come to the podium. Please state your name, your county of residence, and your concerns. There are 100 people out here. <laughs> <laughs> that concludes the public hearing on Resolution 49-2023. Uh, entertain a motion from council to approve resolution 49-2023. So moved. Moved. Second. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Ms. Leahy, did you have any comments that you wanted to make? No, I don't. If the council has any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you. Questions from anyone? All those in favor of resolution 49-2023 say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carried. Resolution passes. Thank you very much. Okay, next is resolution number 50-2023. This is approving the modifications to the Wacomico County Board of Appeals rules or procedure. And we have Mr. Andrew Illuminati here, if there are any questions. I a motion, from, excuse me one second, let me, where I'm supposed to be. Entertain a motion from council to approve resolution 50-2023. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? I think we're good. All, any discussion? Any questions? All those in favor of Resolution 50 2023 say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carry. Resolution passes. Okay, next for your consideration is Resolution number 51 2023. This is approving the Police Accountability Trial Board Agreement slash contract with the Office of Administrative Hearings. And Council had a work session on this request on March 7th. <coughs> and again, Mr. Illuminati is here if there are any questions. Entertain a motion from Council to approve Resolution 51 2023. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion or questions? Mr. Illuminati, did you have any comments you wanted to make? No. Okay. All those in favor of Resolution 51-2023 say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Resolution passes. Mr. Yeah. President, that's all I have. Thank you. 
At this time, we open the floor for public comments. If you have any comments that you'd like to make, you can come to the podium. Please state your name, your county of residence, and your concerns. Um, I know we have a few people here in reference to uh, the Ward Museum. What we're doing with the Ward Museum actually is giving an open opportunity for an open forum with Salisbury University. Uh, and uh, we've talked to Eli before to, uh, to set this up, and they gratefully agreed to come here. Um, it's not a, any legislative forum for the council. It's simply um, an open forum for discussion. At the same time, we also have some members, representatives from the foundation who will also be speaking uh, in reference to that. So those topics will be covered tonight, I think, in, in length, uh, you know, as far as those two groups are concerned. So that being said, if there still are any comments that anybody would like to make, uh, feel free to come to the podium. And again, state your name, county of residence, and any concerns you might have. Yes, sir. My name is Timothy Howlett. I'm a resident of Somerset County, Chrisfield, Maryland. Is that all I'm supposed to say? That's it. Okay. And then you can tell us uh, what, what's going on. Well, what's going on is I'm here to talk about the Ward Museum. Uh, I'm from Chrisfield. A little bit about me. I'm a nine-year veteran of the Coast Guard, 23-year state uh, employee, retired. I own two businesses in Crisfield. One of them's an HVACR business I've owned for 43 years. I love Crisfield. That's the bottom line. That's why I'm here. Crisfield is a very unique place. It's a place of watermen. It's a place of wild, wild fowl. And the Ward brothers are from Crisfield, which is where what this topic is all about. If you haven't read about the Ward brothers, you really should do that. It's a very, very they're a very interesting couple of guys. If you're a Crisfielder, you know that they're from Down Neck. Down Neck is down the neck in Crisfield. You know, they, they did some remarkable things starting as barbers, and then they, you know, started doing the, the hunting decoys so people could catch birds, which turned into some of the most beautiful art in the world. These guys are world-renowned world folks that started in Crisfield. And, you know, over time, everybody recognized that. It's a long story. I encourage you to read up on those guys. And, you know, the, the Ward Museum, you know, the Ward name in the museum reflects who those guys were, where they came from, and what they did. And it's very important that we safeguard that name and, and, and the, rich, the rich culture that they provided. They're very unique guys. They'll never be another group like them. And to know that they were, became so popular in the world, you know, not just in the locale, but all over the world, we need to safeguard it, and the reason I came because we heard about the Ward Museum closing. A lot of stuff we hear is good, but that's not always unusual. You know, it's social media. We read it. Appreciate you guys coming from the college, because we. I wanted to speak, but I really didn't know what to say. You know, what do you say when you don't really know what's going on? Except, please let be careful with with what those what those guys did who they were, where they came from, and where, where, where you go from here. Chrisfield, I'm a member of the Development Board, Economic Development Board of Chrisfield. I'm a member of the Chrisfield Heritage Foundation Board. I do not represent them. I just, I am a member of those boards because I care about Chrisfield. I'll join any board if it helps Chrisfield. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I just love Chrisfield. If you know me, you know I love Chrisfield. Go on Facebook. You'll figure it out. If you don't figure it out, give me a call. I'll talk to you. I'm not very shy. But what's important is, is what happens next. I'm going to stay to see what happens next, but I can tell you a lot of explaining needs to happen. A lot of communication needs to happen, and I'd love to see something more come to Crisfield. Right now, we're, we're, there, we're in, a, in the in midst of a development of Crisfield. There's a, there's a good team and the mayor, the council, the county supporting it. Crisfield's getting ready to happen, so stand by. If you, want to, if you want to look for something to do, go down there. It's getting ready to happen, and I firmly believe that. I've been over there 43 years. I've tried every angle to help Crisfield because it should look different. But anyway, we have a museum. We have a place we could do things. So just keep Crisfield in mind because those guys are from Crisfield. And, and if you read about them, you'll fall in love with those two guys. They're, they're the most unique people you'll ever meet. And they are Eastern Shore. They're Crisfield. They're Eastern Shore. And, they, and, and we're all, that's all us, regardless of what county we're from. So please make the best of whatever's going to happen. That's what I'm asking for. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, Tim, thank you very much. Um, uh, my name is Shauna Kearsley, and I am an executive board member 
uh, for the Friends of Crisfield, uh, which is a 501c3 uh, nonprofit in good standing here in the state of Maryland. Tim, I'm gonna try to do this, guys, before I cry. And my heart's broken. We're getting to the other side of this issue. And for that, I am most grateful. Thank you to the Salisbury University. Eli's here. Martha Graham, when I heard you were on this team, I cried again. Um, this is really heartbroken for me. Uh, the last 10 years have been my whole life, the Ward Museum of Wildfowl Art. And um, I'm Jamaican, and my grandmother, who speaks a very deep patois, says, the cow does not know his tail until it is gone. Well, guess what, guys? The tail's gone. And we're all to be held accountable for this. Um, there are big white elephants that are going to be in this room tonight. But having worked for the Ward Museum, I started working as a volunteer. I worked, I was on the board of the Crisfield Heritage Foundation, so I'm very passionate about the legacy of Lem and Steve, and Steve Ward. That's very important to us in Crisfield. It's also very important to the international community. Um, so we're all responsible for this. I worked in finance at the Ward Museum, and I know most of the carvers that are international that make a tremendous amount of money on this business don't have a membership to the museum. The membership, $7. So it is very difficult to run a museum. And guys, thank you so much, because I know this is a very difficult decision. The museum, we've been losing a lot of money for a lot of years. And I'm so glad to see you guys here. So there are three things that I'm asking of, 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 of you guys that are, are, are the keeper of this heritage um, of Lemon Steve Ward is, number one, Barbara Gurm. Most of you may know of Barbara Gurm. She's been with, uh, with the Ward collection since you guys were in Holloway Hall. I don't know what's happened to Barbara, but I hope you will address that tonight. I do hope, if she's not retiring, that Barbara goes with the collection because I think our community is very concerned about how this collection is cared for. And that's very important, <clears throat> I think, to a lot of folks. So that's number one. Um, number, number two is that on behalf of the Crisfield, the Friends of Crisfield, we're asking that you consider to send the name back to Crisfield, Maryland. We would like the name back. Lem and Steve Ward Nature's counterfeiter of wildfowl art are from Crisfield, Maryland. SU and the alumni, donors, and supporters of the Ward Museum have done an incredible job, myself included. Um, we've done a great job being great, great stewards of this museum, and SU has propped us up for a very, very long time. I've made some of those 911 calls, and they were not pretty, right? So I thank you guys, but we would like to keep the name we believe that it would be a great gift to send the name of Lemon Steve Ward back to Crisfield, Maryland, where it belongs, within the context of their legacy. And we think that that would be just a really amazing thing for the community to do. It is good for the state of Maryland because Crisfield happens to be on the very low economic scale of the state. And so that would help the governor and the state to get us up there. We all need those numbers. It would be good for SU and Y Comico and the Carvers, and I guarantee you that Crisfield, Maryland would make a wonderful museum in Crisfield, Maryland, and you guys can all come and visit us. We love Crisfield. And so those are the two things that I'm asking. The third thing is I know that you guys are really upset, but we've got a world champion, folks. 50 years of a world champion is happening on the last weekend in April. That's one of the most expensive events that we ever put on. And we don't make money. That's the truth. That's the white elephant. And we work hard on that event. And I know that you guys are mad, but we are committed. And I am asking you, please <laughs> lean into the world championship. It's probably going to be the last year. And if you can lean into the world championships the way that you guys are leaning into this bonfire here tonight, I think we might have a shot. So Barbara Germ, we should have a big party for her. 
It's, it's a big party, a retirement. Doctor, I want the whole works, like the big stuff. Uh, world the Ward World Championship of Crisfield, Maryland. Wall World Championship of Wildfall Art, Crisfield, Maryland. And I encourage you all to buy a ticket to the World Championship or just come in. I think they'll just let you guys in for free this year. Thank you very much and good luck. My name is Martha Graham. I have been a public servant of this community for about 50 years. I have served on city council, I've served mm -hmm. on Greater Salisbury, and I have served on many boards. I know you're Shaney. Oh, you can't hear me? Do I need to start over? Yes. I start over. <laughs> My name is Martha Graham. I have been a public servant for the community for about 50 years. My interest is arts, culture, and preservation for this community. They are the complements to the working people of this town. We are witnessing a terrible tragedy right now. There are victims in this tragedy. Frankly, I think that the university is a victim. They have been given a mandate by the regents to acquire that museum and reduce the debt in any way they can to do it quickly and to do it quietly. And that's what they have done. It has been quick and quiet. The community is very conscious of the value of the university. And therefore, I feel that the media has given the university a great deal of promotion for this task that they have been given. They haven't had a choice. They have to do it, and they're doing it. The other victim is the community of Salisbury, Wicomico County. This is a terrible thing that is happening. We have a national museum. We have had many, many members that are not even in this community. We have had huge support. In fact, about four years ago, a member of this community gave $250,000 to add that addition onto the museum. It is up and it is functioning. The real dilemma is that the quietness with which this has happened, which the Regents told Salisbury University, do it quietly. Don't get it out in the public. They don't want any feedback from the public. It's typical Western Shore attitude about what goes on over here about a national museum that is in our community. I think it's disgraceful. And I'm hoping that out of this group tonight, with the help of the County Council, that we can get together a task force that will take a look at some of the opportunities that would be available. We have the finances in this community to do what needs to be done. Salisbury University knows we have the finances. They've got the Guerrero building. They've got the Henson building. They've got the Fulton Arts School. They know there's money in this community. We all know that. We need a task force that will get together and decide with the help of the university in cooperation we don't want to have a battle with the university. They are a great asset to this community. But to have a national museum in our town is very important. It is a draw for many people. So I thank you. I could not let this go by. It just really broke my heart when I saw that they were going to do something as tragic as this to our community. Thank you. I'm Joanne Wilbur, and normally I stay away from conflicts, but when Salisbury University changed the locks on the doors to the Ward Museum last week, only letting the long-term employees who cared for the collection into the museum for a short period of time and under SU police escort, I decided to speak out. Doesn't this remind you of a situation in countries and 
in pre-World War II Europe when no one spoke out and later regretted it? Well, I've decided to speak out. I volunteered at the Ward Museum for over four, 20 years, so I know that the Ward Museum is not some rinky-dink duck museum. It is a world-class museum of which the taxpayers of Salisbury, Wicomico County, the Delmarva Peninsula, and the state of Maryland can be proud. This museum created an exhibit for the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C., highlighting the folk art of decoy carving. It was <clears throat> shown in the Smithsonian Gallery in Washington. This museum cooperated with the Walters Art Gallery in Baltimore to bring an exhibit of some of its ancient artifacts to Salisbury. This museum has exhibited wildlife paintings and carvings from some of the leading artists in the world. It has also shown art of other genres and art by local artists. This museum has had on its curatorial committee the former director of the National Gallery of Art. It has not had to renovate, at taxpayers' expense, a building on its campus saying it has practiced inclusion. It just included everyone from all walks of life in its day-to-day -day practices. The World Championships bring participants from many countries around the world to demonstrate that people of all levels, from beginners to the best in the world, can be competitive. It has educated the local children in conservation practices and engendered in them an appreciation of the natural world. In short, the War Museum has served the taxpayers for over 50 years and should be allowed to continue to serve another 50. I would like Salisbury University to make use of its Center for Conflict Resolution to make that happen. So far, it hasn't shown its usefulness. I don't know about you, but I no longer want to be associated with a university which, by example, teaches its young leaders of tomorrow that the way to get their way in this world is to be sneaky, fabricate, and treat others as criminals in order to further their goals. Thank you. My name is Todd Becker. I'm relatively new to the region. Mm -hmm. I, my wife and I came here only in 2008 after having spent our life living overseas in some of the better known kind of cities of the world, Berlin, Athens, Brussels, uh, and smaller cities like Leipzig, which are renowned as cultural centers. When we came here, we came here to be here with the university and to be with our children who lived here. We discovered the Ward Museum. We were amazed with it. It's not a national museum, it's an international museum. We have friends from all over the world because of my work as a diplomat and having traveled the world. We invite them to come and visit us. There's one thing that they all remark on. They have never seen anything like the Ward Museum. They are impressed. It is world class. To take it away from its wonderful setting on the Shoemaker Pond, which is an excellent place for it, and to squeeze it into a downtown store or a downtown building robs not only our citizens, not only our children, but indeed the entire world of a very unique and wonderful museum demonstrating, as you have said, the wonderful work of Steve and Lem Ward and the culture of the Eastern Shore, which is unique. We need to, to, to follow up, I think, what was suggested to have a task force which can bring this out into the open instead of hiding it in the darkness and to bring it out where the public can discuss it, where we can find an open solution and we will find the resources because it is a, an institution which is loved and should be supported not only by the people of this town and this region but also by the, the state to recognize it for what it is a great international, a unique international attraction to our town. Yeah. 
<clears throat> My name is Ed Banks. <clears throat> I'm a retired attorney uh, here in Wicomico County. I've been involved in um, Greater Salisbury Committee, uh, Delmarva Poultry Association, just about every organization in the, in the area, either representing them as a client or a member of their boards. And this is a disaster that's brewing. Mm -hmm. And people will talk to you as though it's completed. It is not completed because there has been no process. We need time. We need time and money. You give us the time somehow, we will find the money. We will find the money the same way Martha Graham was talking about. We found the money in the past. There are very, very charitable people in this community. Most recently, it seems like we've forgotten already that um, Junior Achievement has raised $3 million with two grants, uh, one from the Henson Foundation and the other from who, Martha? Uh, anyhow, there was two. <laughs> Purdue. Yeah. Purdue. Thank you. Purdue. Uh, correct. And that was $3 million. And in the process of all that, uh, the Amazon lady or one of those folks, um, Mackenzie Scott, um, tossed in four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000. And that's how these things go. And that's how it's always gone. And that's how the Ward Museum has always gotten by. Um, have, a, have a fundraiser for, for Governor Glenn Denning and then try and get $500,000 in his budget, and guess what? He'll put two fifty dollars in, and that comes to you, and you breathe for another year. Almost all museums work this way, hand to mouth. They are not profit-making. Will, they will never make a profit. But I heard that the memberships are $7, and the carvers don't belong. You know why? Because nobody mailed the carvers. Nobody got behind them and said, hey, we've increased the... The, the memberships from $7 to $50 like they ought to be. Nobody's gotten after them. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to stand here and talk all night, um, but I want to make sure, John, that you understand there may be nobody here from the Ward Foundation. Most of the people that are here are friends of the Ward from every conceivable public. How many are here just opposed to losing the museum? Can we just hold up your hands? Okay. How many people are here from the Foundation? Okay, good. And how many here are from Salisbury University? Okay. The people that are here tonight have been boiling. 85, 90% of the people that are here tonight have been boiling for the last three weeks. We just get one insult after another. Nobody knows. Nobody knows anything. As the gentleman from Chrisfield said, it's hard to know what to say when you don't know what's going on. It's hard to know what to say when you don't know what's going on. And those of us, including myself, I'm not a founder. I would love to be able to say I was. But I was the next generation who picked it up and ran with it. Um, we raised money under the damnedest of circumstances and kept it going and kept it going. But to ride by that building now and see it planned for separation from its collection is wrong. It's wrong. It is, the, it is going to be a colossal blunder of epic proportions if we let this happen. If we have to go, thank you. If we have to go talk to the Board of Regents, let's do it. Maybe you can buy us time somehow. Maybe you can uh, um, tell these folks from Salisbury University how important this is, because I know that the chancellor at the University of Maryland has on at least one occasion said, I understand the Ward Museum is an important, he might have said cultural, but he at least said it's an important um, asset of the local community down there. That's a fact. Uh, what happened from then on, I don't know. But Norman Conway provided uh, through his offices he managed to get $200,000 a year, if, and that's been going on for 20 years. If only that got an inflationary increase, the 200 would have to be 350, and there's been 300 and 400 kicked in along the years since then in the way of loans that seem to be forgiven. But even those things, if they were granted an inflationary increase, there would there'd be plenty to, 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 go, to get by to make it a success. But there are many, many people um, from this community and elsewhere, heroes in the state of Maryland 
people like John Lukemeyer, Jack Lukemeyer, uh, Tom Mullen. The, these are people, they, they fought at the, uh, um, uh, the Battle of the Bulge. They were on Normandy, and they came down from Baltimore to help us with this museum. Martha is a, is a hero, too. She was the first woman on the Salisbury City Council, uh, first woman in the uh, Greater Salisbury Committee. She's married to Jack Graham, who recently died, a uh, great friend of mine, a wonderful man. And uh, Jack was very instrumental in designing this museum and every museum around here, the Discovery Museum in Pocomoke, his personal work of art. We've got to be given time to come up with the money. The university suggested to us not long ago that this community can't afford this um, museum. This community envisioned, with the help of some Chris Fielders, envisioned this community, discovered, if you will, Steve and Lem Ward, took them to what was then the National Carving Contest in New York and got them placed as winners of that in New York. Envisioned this, got the city of Salisbury to donate the land, got Wacomico County to throw in money on behalf of the citizens of Wacomico County for which there is a plaque in that building. And then we went around and went about the business of raising the money. We hit every bank in, in the state. We hit every human being that moved and raised the money to build a museum. And then we started helping it get by, get by. Gentlemen, you've got to find a way, ladies and gentlemen. You've got to help us find a way to solve it. If you will buy us the time, I believe we can find the money. But we need time and we need candor, and we need all the facts that we can possibly get. That's everything I have to say. Hello, I'm, Kim I'm Kimberly Groves, and I'm a resident of Wicomico County. I actually came up here to talk about something different, but I decided to put my two cents, two cents in about the Ward Museum. We can't afford to not have the Ward Museum. When I was probably not much older than my daughter is now, about seven, I went to the Ward Museum when it was at the university. It was small, it was cramped, and it was fascinating. I looked at these carvings that looked so realistic. I thought they were actually real animals. They were real to me. And I thought the talent that was poured into creating this art was phenomenal. And then I was blessed to have a godfather, his name was Wendell Townsend, he passed uh, about three or four years ago, who took up carving as a hobby, carving decoys and hand painting them. He was phenomenal. He gave us his art as Christmas gifts, as birthday gifts, just because he enjoyed the hobby. I have a whole box full of his art in my attic. I contemplated when I moved back here donating that art to the Ward Museum as a loan. But hearing what's going to happen, what may happen to this museum and the struggles that some people who have loaned their things to the museum are having possibly getting them back makes me doubt wanting to do that. My godfather's art deserves to be displayed, it doesn't deserve to be kept in a box. It should be seen. This art doesn't need to be shoved away. It needs to be shown to the world, to the people. And we need to, to bring our kids to this museum like we've been doing for 20 odd years and before when it was in Holloway Hall. So we need this museum. We need the time. We need to either go to those regions or bring those regions here and make them explain to us why they're doing what they're doing to us. We are not some little podunk university. We're Salisbury University. We have rights. We have this enormous collection, this enormous beautiful object that we are, are able to, to, to share. And they want us to shove it in a corner. What a barn expression, nobody shoves baby in a corner. So let's make them explain to us why they're doing what we're doing, why they're doing what they're doing to us. What, what's the motive, why? And let's get our museum back. And everyone in this room who doesn't donate or, want, or, or, or is in support of this museum, 
I, I want to challenge you guys to put your money where your mouth is and donate to the museum. Let's keep this museum going and let's fight for it. We're in here now fighting for it. Let's continue the fight outside these doors because we need this museum for us, for our children, for Lemon Steve Ward, for the people of Crisfield, for the Eastern Shore, because it's our heritage, our culture, and our art. And we cannot allow someone across the bridge to take it away from us. Thank you. My name's Catherine Adkins. Um, my father was E. Stanton Adkins of E.S. Adkins and Company. Uh, and any of you who knew him, and some of you did, uh, he did pass away, unfortunately, in 1989. But he was quite uh, an advocate of preserving local culture and local art in this area. And he and my mother were supportive of the Ward Museum from day one. My father obviously did not see the construction of the current museum. However, my second father, my stepfather, Tom George, one of the founders of George Miles and Buer, was a, a very strong member of the Ward Museum over the years. Um, Coach Ed Banks in baseball, I believe, as well. Uh, Most of it was ahead of my draft board. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, Tom you know, moved back here back in uh, probably the 1940s, I'm guessing, uh, when, when he founded that organization, uh, George Miles and Buer. Um, but over the decades until he died at the age of 91 in 2009, he met carvers uh, from around the region and amassed an enormous collection of decoys. When he passed away, he had been a docent for the museum for decades. When he passed away, he had an extremely valuable collection of decoys. It's the Thomas S. George collection in the museum, part of the permanent collection. He donated it to the museum because he was led to believe that it would be on display forever for the residents of this county. He did not leave it to his children, his grandchildren, his great-grandchildren. He left it to our community. And again, the lack of information has been really painful. Painful to my mother, who is still alive. Painful to hear that some of his collection is going to be either stored or sold, which is disgusting. And if you're going to sell my stepfather's collection, give it back. We will find something else to do with it. I found that appalling that, you know, if somebody puts a will together and has thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of artwork that they donate to a museum, that needs to be cherished and not thrown into a shoe store downtown where no one will ever see it. Thank you. I worked at the university from uh, 1988 to 2000. I knew the museum when it was in Holloway Hall. It was a lovely little museum that nobody ever went in. Yeah. I, it was a hallway. You know, if you need to get from one part of Holloway Hall to the other, you walked through the Ward Museum, which is how well everything was protected. There was nobody there. When it moved to the new uh, facility, there was a lot of excitement in this town. Um, and the, you know, the museum is, is, has really been incomparable. Probably some folks have never even been in it. Um, but just a handful of other things that I think are, have been missed that have happened in, the, in uh, the museum over the years. My daughter, many years ago, participated in a, a program sponsored by the State of Maryland Education Department. It was called the Diary of a River. It was a summer program for elementary school students. And it was, it was focused on the Ward Museum, the Salisbury Zoo, and Pemberton Park. And those children, fourth, fifth, sixth graders, were doing research on the culture and research, scientific research on the river. These kids, to this day, my daughter is now uh, a grown woman. She went on and got a master's degree in environmental education in the state of Was from University of Washington. I think this was a, a really important thing that, that she was involved in. The, the local t 
teachers from the Board of Ed were involved in this. At no point do I recall anybody from the education department at Salisbury University being involved in that. I don't, re I don't know if the art department at Salisbury University has been ever involved in educational programs. My husband and I have done educational programs for children on weekends at the Ward Museum. So there's all these kinds of things that go on there that I think over the years have been missed as well as just lovely events. Uh, you know, it's been a lovely place for people to have, have parties and weddings and, and uh, gatherings, and it's in a lovely location. So again, I join with everyone else. I, I was flabbergasted when I started hearing this news uh, just a few weeks ago, because again, the Ward Museum has been, you know, sort of front and center of my life for the past 60 plus years. Uh, and uh, again, I, I find, and I've talked to people from around the country who have had, in, who have had uh, experiences here in Salisbury and they are equally appalled and disgusted about what's going on. So I, uh, I also urge that this be reconsidered. Thank you. Thank you.